Welcome back to the Martini Works podcast. Da 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 ba ba da ba. I'm still waiting for my my little slogan from that one guy. Just slogan. Saying. Little, what is it called? Tag it's a jingle. Jingle. <laughs> Give me the jingle. I want the jingle. Jingle jangle. Well, welcome back to the Martini Works podcast, where we talk about car builds. We talk about the car community. We talk about things that are happening in the car industry. So if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for listening or tuning in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. If you guys are looking for car parts, mod your car over at martiniworks.com. That includes intakes, exhaust, wheels, tires, coilovers like Fortunato or BC. We've got it all, and we're happy to help you build your car the right way. We're going to be honest with you, too. So if you pick a shitty mod and it doesn't work, we're going to tell you, hey, maybe we should go with something like this or that instead. Hey, are you sure? All right. You really hot, sure? Hot take right away, beginning okay. of the podcast. Oh, God. Name oh. a shitty product. A <laughs> shitty product right out yeah. of the gate? Yeah, you want to. You want to talk the talk, well, you got to walk the walk. <laughs> you got to walk the walk. <laughs> the amount of times I've heard people inquire about Raceline coilovers mm-hmm. for bespoke <laughs> fitments is bespoke not... Bespoke fitments? Yeah, they're like, hey, I've got a 1972 Alfa Romeo, mm-hmm. and I, I was thinking about getting some Racelines. No. <laughs> unless unless you have the most basic of basic cars, that, that coilover is guaranteed not to fit right out of the gate. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I figured out, I had a really good conversation with Ray from Fortunato. Um, because it, it was funny, people. There's people that die on that hill of. Oh yeah, Racelands are fine. They, they work for me. Four hundred dollars, and I love them. And it all comes down to what me and Ray were talking about was like the person's expectation. What do they yeah. want out yeah. of that coilover? If they literally, they just didn't want stock ride height. Okay, then yeah, it does I it? Yeah, it did it. Technically, they did it. Yeah. <laughs> However, because like I, when I got my Mark IV GTI, it was on Racelands, mm-hmm. right? And uh, it. I honestly, I was driving it down the road. I'm like, okay, it's not that. And then I hit a bump, and then I completely <laughs> understood. Okay, yes, yeah, no, those. Yeah. Uh, the biggest they thing, suck. I, the biggest thing I learned was even at the, I think it was at the Fortunato trip. In that same discussion, was like I learned about heat with coilovers mm-hmm. and how much heat can really play an effect well, yeah. into it too. Because yeah, if you're just rolling around town and the and the coilovers never really get hot, right? The oil never really gets warms hot, up. never yeah. warms up. Sure, you're gonna be in this this state of like mm-hmm. ignorant bliss. But the problem is is like when you take those out and you start using and abusing them, you're hitting a curb, you're going around a corner, and all of a sudden that oil starts to heat up and you feel a sloppy coilover when you're on the track. There is no yeah. worse feeling than what that feels like. Yeah, so. I mean it's just like your car, it's gotta warm up in the morning. The oil in your engine needs to warm yeah. up, the oil in your coilovers need to warm up. I feel that too. I mean, I'm on uh BCs on the daily and I notice like it's cold in the morning. And it's like <laughs> yeah. you hit those first couple bumps on a 20 degree morning you're like, oof. oof yeah but then you know after a while it's like okay we're good now we're, we we got the first few she's a little warmed up <laughs> she's awake for the day we're good to go <laughs> so in today's podcast we're gonna be talking a little bit about our cars in the first uh couple minutes here and then we're gonna be jumping right into we've had a lot of requests for people to talk about what brands may or may not be related to each other <gasps> in the industry so i know we had a couple Spicy. comments about that for for a month or two and we're gonna shed some light on at least what we know and then what we have some insinuation towards mm-hmm. um and then in the third segment we'll talk about some trending news that is happening in the car community car industry maybe some of our plans jumping into riverside chattanooga and how we think it's going to go because when this mm-hmm. drops it will already be done with it it'll be friday yeah we might even talk a little bit about it'll Gavin be the Bird. first night of the show yeah yeah when this the, goes the pre-meet i finally other. found out where that came from how have you how not you known so how, it's the name. other jinxy guy right what, what's his what's name, his name? No. yeah what's the his guy name with the glasses the, he plays madden the, the other what's his jinxy name guy. i don't know oh my sketch. god it's sketch get, sketch get it together brother the tuesday thing yeah, it's yeah, the yeah tuesday you, thing you know some things all right well <laughs> we're we're gonna, putting the pieces together yeah i saw it on tiktok last <laughs> yeah, night you see a lot of it so we uh the only reason i hadn't seen it earlier is because we spent 16 hour fucking days in this shop for like the last four days getting these cars ready. Yeah, we got you disconnected from the internet for a little bit. How did that feel? It was it, the wildest part was I kept going out to Instagram mm-hmm. and I like look at it for two seconds. I'm like, I don't even have the mental energy <laughs> to do any of this right now. I just put my phone yeah. back down. I went back to doing whatever yeah, I was doing. Yeah, so um, in typical fashion, we decided to build like four fucking cars <laughs> the week before a car show that's 1,200 miles away. Mm-hmm. How did that go? I think it went great. <laughs> Did it? Did it, it did, did it go great? Is it still going great? Because we're still not done. Yeah, I know. We leave in like twelve hours. Yeah, it's not even a day anymore. It's like you're you're down to hours. Yeah, yeah. So we have a we have quite a bit that we did get done. I think the biggest the biggest thing to be proud of is clapped car 
will be making its debut. It's one fucking color. At Riverside. Almost. It is one color for the most There's part. There's some of it that's not one color, but well, we're getting it. The intention is there. <laughs> yeah. That was I love the I kind of I'm a little spoiler. There's a, a decal that I saw placed somewhere. It's not on the car yet, but it's cut out and it's ready to be placed. And it says work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yep. Which is ironic. Is that the backup plan? Or no, is so, that- so, the, so the thing is... is <laughs> it's on the rear. Yeah, so we... Ra- oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, so we wrapped it, right? We've got all this stuff done. I'm feeling really happy with the car. But it's... But, like, even the wrap, right? Like, Joran at FX did an incredible mm-hmm. job yeah. with it. But really, he did it in less than 48 hours. That's insane. There's less than there's four of feet pieces. of wrap left. <laughs> which means, like, we were stretching and pulling. Down we wanted to make wire. sure everything was good. Um... But I think it looks really good considering the time frame. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not a show car, though. We're trying to get this thing on the track. Mm-hmm. We want to get it used and abused, which means, you know, it's it's at a position where it's like I'm I was actually more happy about Dustin and I getting those status racing harnesses put in correctly than I think that's even important. like the wrap. That's because important. It, every, I'd rather have you spend more time on the thing that's supposed to keep you safe yeah, than, than the wrap. Than the yeah. thing that's just supposed to look nice and shiny. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was a cool feeling. So the S2K is is there. We got a couple pieces we'll have to do once we get it back. There's a wing sitting here. <laughs> yeah, we gotta put that back on. Uh Lars got his E forty six nearly done. Yeah. Um, it looks nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's tough because we got new wheels coming for that too, right? We do. We got some stage wheels coming for Are that. They not Brand making it new Riverside? We're really, we're really aiming for it. Apparently, okay. it's on a, a a boat. What in Milwaukee? We're just keep, waiting for this. Why is there a boat in Milwaukee? Of- we're landlocked, brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keep things off the, of boats. I don't make the rules. Okay, if it was up to me, I would have just. We're had fucked it. if it's on a boat. <laughs> yeah, if it's on a boat, that means it needs to go from the boat to the dock to the dock to a train to the train to the train yard to then a truck to get it to somewhere so else. So Billy we're, and Lars were not getting those. Billy and Lars wanted to save money, and they're like, "What if we just had it air shipped or dropped off in Milwaukee?" And I was like, yeah, it wasn't well, how much did you how much did you save? And they're like, four hundred bucks. I'm like, it's going to cost you three hundred and thirty to get down yeah. there plus labor to get the wheels to bring up. <laughs> you should have just had them fucking shipped. OK, here. some some clarity here. These are brand new. Like these wheels have not been released yet. Yeah, never so been that's, seen before. That's why they're, they're like, why the hell can't you get wheels in time? It's yeah, because right. they're it's like the factory made a set for us, shipped it ahead of time before all the other ones shipped. So trying to get them. For the show yeah. to kind of unveil, we have the tires things. here though, so that's cool. That's, that's one step of it. Yeah, we can't really do anything else. Arguably the least important part well, of that <laughs> situation. <laughs> no, but we've been, man, everyone's been going hard. Obviously, what was your favorite part of working on the four thirty gels? Uh, getting it done. Um, big flames. <laughs> big flames. I. A little jealous. Maybe shot a bigger flame than the RX-8. Dude, that shit was gnarly. Weird. I don't know if it's supposed. to I don't be think it's supposed to. Flames, but I don't it's... think it's supposed to. But it did. I don't know if it's the <laughs> mixture of. The relocating, <laughs> relocating the O2 sensors, uh, the leak that we had in the exhaust manifold, the combination of that, all the blood, sweat, and tears that were probably dripped in. There is some Maybe blood the, in there. The chicken nuggy that was left in somewhere. Oh, I wasn't happy about oh, it. That's, that's the chicken nuggy. That's what it was. was it was pissed about the No, it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a wild last week. Obviously, with. Uh, us getting ready for Riverside, it means that we're going to be like out of the shop for essentially a week, which mm-hmm. in this world is fucking terrifying because we got a lot of stuff to do and a lot of stuff going on. So trying yeah. to get ahead of things to be out for a week to make content for you guys is a bit of a journey. And yeah. then, you know, stacking, working on three cars on top of that um, gets to be a lot. So I think, you know, Friday we were all feeling pretty burnt, but uh, glad we got her done. The Ferrari sounds absolutely incredible yeah um the e46 i think is going to be great for lars i think he's going to have a fantastic time with that and the s2k i mean holy shit i know i never thought i'd see the day i never thought i'd see the day either to be fully honest with you yeah but if you were here over this weekend thank you if you guys are listening in we got a shop at the beginning of february Mm -hmm. um where martini works has ran out of now which has been absolutely awesome i need a new shop at this point i know jesus it's a mess but (laughs) Um, we had a ton of friends come and, and help out with the car. So yeah. if you came this weekend, whether you helped for five minutes or five hours, like we appreciate you more than, you know, the extra set of hands was absolutely huge. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, it's, we are, we are in a position where the S 2000, we know exactly what we got to do nearly done. And it's prepped to go on a trailer tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. E46 can run and drive right now. If we get the stickers or if we get the wheels and tires, great. If not, She's going as is. Cool. 430 needs one more gasket and like 
two bolts, and that's nice. going to be good to go for its wash down. And uh, yeah, we're a pretty wash much down, huh? Yeah, well, it hasn't been washed in mm-hmm. over. You got the BBS is back on. Yeah, the BBS is one. I like on. that. I, like I the BBS. I love those wheels. So, Dakota. Yeah, I got a fun little quirky thing. Sure. I uh, Hit me. I was Not working really. on uh, the Golf, getting it ready for a little road trip we're doing, and I did the oil change. And the Golf R has a plastic oil pan and plastic. Drain plug? Drain plug. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard Isn't that life. weird as hell? For a golf not, R? Yeah, and not only that, but the, the plastic drain plug is like two turns and then it's in. It's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know, I that freaks me out. I, I was freaked out doing it. I used the flat head to take out my oil drain plug. No, 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 Isn't I don't that like that weird? weird? That is I don't weird. like that at all. That's that one, wrong. Are that's you sure one, it was the engine oil? Yeah. <laughs> that's one Wait bad cross thread away. <laughs> yeah. I, I did replace that plug. Um, but okay. and then it also to make you feel a little more uh, confident in it, it has like a notch. So like when you turn it, it like fits into place and okay. kind of like nice. Well, that's kind of nice. That's still weird. It was nice, but really like yeah, this feels wrong. Mm-hmm. This was really wrong. If there's one constant that I probably want in my life. It's the fact that like I know how an oil drain is going to go. Yeah, and it's like metal bolt, metal pan. Yeah. To be I'm fair. Screwed. It was the easiest oil change I've That's ever right. Okay. The Maybe filter, they're onto something. Maybe filter, they're onto something. Phenomenal spot. Right on top of the engine. Yep. Was able to screw it right I like, off. I do like the, yeah. the little top ones. The only things you get a little bit of a mess when you're... But if you that lay was, some paper towels yeah. around. But. I remember when, when I was doing an oil change way back in the day, the E55 AMG has its filter on the top, I think it is. Mm-hmm. And I remember so many people gave me hell about it for no reason. And they're like, that's the dumbest place to put an oil filter. I'm like, that is the easiest place yeah, that you can put so an oil easy. filter yeah. is on the top. Yeah. Because it's like, if you let it sit... That oil essentially like drains out. You don't have much of a yeah. no much I mean, of a mess. Just lay a couple towels around it. I will say the RX8 is kind of a bitch with the oil fill because it's like up and on the back, but like kind of like on the side of like a forty-five. But you got to like really like reach back in there yeah. and then grab it, and it, it that makes a mess because it doesn't sit like upright. Yeah. It's like Dude, at a fucking I did angle. The, an oil change in my Grom too. Actually, I know it's oh, a yeah. little under unrelated, but the oil drain plug is directly above the exhaust pipe. Perfect. Direct, like they are lined up <laughs> symmetrical, so you just pour out and just there, there's it's going yeah, directly all smoke. over the. I need exhaust. one of those. Uh, I need it for the 242 because that one's also fucking weird. There's like a I don't know I can't remember what it is there if it was like the engine mount or something. There's something like right in the path of yeah. the. I don't fucking like filter, when they do that. And it would shoot every. You can get like those like little bendable like slide things that you can mm-hmm. shove That's up smart. in there. That's I, I need to invest in one of those. That'd be pretty sick. I can't remember the last time I did an oil change on a bike. I don't think I ever have. Ooh. And I had a lot of bikes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's scary. I don't know. Yeah, nope. Can't anyway. remember. Can't, rem- <laughs> really can't recall simple, a time. But no, I mean, I think the one time I did is it was on the, the duck that I had, and I looked at it, and I was like, that, I got like halfway in, and I was like, no, I don't want to do the rest of this. This is scary. And it I is. took it in. So you emptied that's the oil out, with- and then you're like, no, I'm good? Well, I remember like <laughs> looking and like having it all done. Like I was like, oh, I'm going to okay. make a day of this. And then I really started to look at it, and I'm like, I feel like if I mess this up, I'm in trouble. Kind of important. That's the thing about the oil change. The easiest thing you can do to your car, probably the most terrifying thing. Because if you forget <laughs> one step of the process, I your mean, engine's ruined. There's only like three steps. But I know. If you forget one, and I forget I would, shit. If you forget <laughs> one step of an oil change, you shouldn't be touching a car. <laughs> You're not wrong. Empty but. fill. You can't see. That's what you think. So I remember one time. <laughs> There's only a couple steps to making babies, and anyone can do that. Too. I remember when, Jeez. when, when uh, I think it was Brent went to do an oil change in the 996. Oh, I, yeah, I remember that. And he on um, he did one of the plugs and oh. got the oil drained and yep. forgot that there were three other plugs. It's a dry sump, right? Yeah, that you have to drain the oil out of. Then he put eight quarts of oil, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. and it was. Pissing oil, leaking oil, dumping oil everywhere. It was the worst experience. I remember how much smoke. Oh that car was smoking when I sold it. There mm-hmm. was so much shit that came out of that. Dude, I remember that because Jesus. we were, it was like Labor Day or Memorial Day or something. So. <laughs> it was like, it was like one of those holidays. I remember we were doing a cookout at your place. Yes. And he did it and we were driving to your place to have the cookout. And I'm like, man, that fucking thing <laughs> is smoking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alex yeah. pulls over. He's like, I just smell oil. Everywhere. everywhere i'm like yeah you left a ton of it in the fucking atmosphere on 41 south heading home so it was just super Dude, overfilled yeah, it yeah. was insanely because well, he, he probably emptied out what like two quarts yeah he emptied two put an eight <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Holy fuck. So we dumped all of it. And I remember I was like, I was so frustrated because there were it was everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, how? And he's like, well, I, and I love Brent. Awesome yeah. human being. Yeah. Love him to death. But I remember he's like, I just thought it was the one plug. I mean, like, to be to be fair, yeah, normally. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known, but I also YouTube everything before yeah, I do it. I've, so. More of the car. I mean, obviously, like the S2000 is one. Nissan's one. But like the Ferrari is three. Or four. Yeah, anything, like anything that's like mid-engine know, yeah. that you start getting into that like mm-hmm. Porsche, it's there's always multiple, and that's why I'm scared of them. Honestly, that's fair because <laughs> it's like, fair. and also you have to do it in a certain order because if you don't do it in a certain order, yeah, sometimes the oil gets stuck it, in between. And that's places. why too, it's like even if you've done a bunch of oil changes, like if I do it on a new make and model that I haven't touched before, I gotta Research. watch the video every time. I gotta watch it because there's hurts. always something fucking weird and one off mm-hmm. that you gotta do. Yeah. There's your daily tip of the day. Just even if you're confident, <laughs> just watch, just a, watch video. a video if you've never done it on that make and model before because there's probably something weird about it. Also, fuck Volkswagen. Anyways, <laughs> you can't say that. Well, they said, "Hey, new Harlequin, everyone! They Harlequin, got- everyone, be oh. on the lookout." Did they get you? Yeah. Now April Fools are like that was just a joke. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. That's the April Fools joke. The April Fools joke is, is that, that they're a, not a joke? doing. Okay, best case scenario, what they were showcasing it on was the ID three, which is a piece of shit car. No one. Cares. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's they how got. It was. They had Dakota all riled up. He yeah, had the, I'm, I'm he really had the when, sale ad for the Supra. I, I was ready. Can, I, can I be honest? And then they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah I want you to be honest. Be Brutally honest. honest. When was the last time Volkswagen committed to doing something truly unique in their production of cars? It's like, been a long yeah. ass time, honestly. But See, uh, could you say why, that for any manufacturer? But like, I, I don't know if I agree because like... I, I, extreme cases right like ford is coming back with a bunch of really cool stuff they're do they did like the drift lever thing and they're doing like trendy things that okay, are I, in the community you're saying more like that okay sure so but like yeah. when was the last time volkswagen was like actually we are doing a harlequin because we know how much you guys love it so we mm-hmm. did it like they used to be huge in the community they they sponsored the the european volkswagen car show for a number of years until it was canceled like they've always been involved with it but i feel like they're kind of pulling a little bit of a mazda where it's like hey here's this go-. just kidding yeah, yeah i agree i, I agree I I, it's just because like I don't know. Everyone's switching over to EV shit. So their new cool yeah. trendy shit is just EV shit that gets swept under the rug. Mm-hmm. Like they redid the Volkswagen bus essentially with that ID yep. buzz. Yeah. And it, it does look kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Like it is kind of cool. But yeah. It's just like all of us in the car community, we're not yeah. interested in that. Yeah. I suppose that's fair. So it's like it's tough. Not to mention, too, it's like twice the cost of fucking anything else right yeah. now because EVs just aren't affordable. Like oh. that just. That's why I do fact. like I do like how and, and he, this is where I'll say I do think domestic car companies are kind of doing the whole EV thing better than some European car companies because I, I I'll give you an example sure the E Ray mm-hmm. from Chevy Ray <laughs> is like they're like okay we're gonna do a, an EV mm-hmm. but we're gonna do it on a platform that you all know and love mm-hmm. and we're still gonna give you a bunch of added benefit by the non EV portion yep. of the car. And we're going to give you all-wheel drive, and we're going to give it to you in yeah. this really cool package. Check As an this option. Thing out. As an option. Check out this, you check want out this cool thing. You can still get the, the VA-powered one. Yeah. But I like I like that. Like, yeah. and then yeah, there's smart. Yeah. there's other companies that I even think like I I get it. They didn't necessarily really get it right, but like Ford came out with that Mach E GT thing, right? They're like, okay, here's oh, an yeah, option yeah, yeah. for you. Still gives you kind of some of that performance. Mm-hmm. Gives you some. Gives you an SUV. Oh, you don't like it? Okay, well then we're just gonna push it over there and we'll try with something else. Like it, it constantly seems like domestic car companies are trying to figure out the EV yeah. mix. Uh, Tesla did it and they nailed it in their domestic company. Yeah, but they're only EV. Right. Yeah. They don't make yeah. any like IC no, no, I see or what you're performance. Getting at. I, I don't necessarily disagree with you at all. I mean, I think that's no. That's I, a good I agree call too. Up. Uh, nobody else is really, everyone's, it feels like everyone's really dancing around. Yeah. In a weird way, like they're I, trying to figure out how to because transition. they know that it's not massive like in the masses like really accepted yet. yeah and they it. know that it's expensive and they know that not everyone can afford it yet so they're like we need to be doing this shit well, we need to have it ready we need to experiment too, right? with like, it yeah people's houses aren't set up and like you gotta no. have someone come in and put a fucking yeah. now imagine in like 20 years it's weird you'll probably buy a sure. used house and there's like already an ev yeah there's thing an ev like station in. you yeah. got stations all it's around like the country everything's kind of lagging behind yeah. it so yeah. it's tough to it's like we're we're in that in i kind of look at it you know like when like the the 2000 like the turn of the millennium you know like when mm-hmm. cell phones and shit were coming out it's like 
and all this like crazy tech was coming. There was actually um, I watched Curtis Connor on YouTube a lot, and he did a video where he was trying out like retro technology. Yeah, and he bought a bunch of like just this like crazy tech shit that was coming out like the 90s and early 2000s and it was like the wearable fucking computer where it was like a literal like keyboard on the wrist monitor nice. glasses like battery pack and it was a real thing. product and it was a real product and it cost like I, I it, was it, was it was ridiculous it was a ridiculous like cost back then. he's like and so he was reviewing like all this like old technology it was like camera wrist watches and shit like he's like at the time he's like i understand it Obviously, today we look at it and laugh because it's like, yes, I have my phone. Yeah. But at the time, it's like they were just experimenting because they, they, they had all this shit and were trying to like puzzle piece it together because they knew what they wanted, they but it just wasn't there. quite there yet. And I feel like that's where we're kind of at with the EVs right now. Like, it's expensive. It's maybe not the best optimized right now. It doesn't make sense like, to use it. But in 10 years... Sure. Honestly, if 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 there was a day, if, if Tamara showed up and Toyota was like, hey, we introduced a, an EV or some mm -hmm. sort of hybrid, probably more EV, and it's the Corolla. Right. But in winter, in cold weather, there is a maximum reduction of performance of 10%. I'd probably buy one. Like to, to just daily around and to just have, they're great cars, they're comfortable, they're big, they're Toyota. The, the problem that kills us, at least up here in the north or where it's there's cold. inclement weather, is the moment that, that, that it gets mm -hmm. cold, you lose so much. Mm -hmm. You're constantly charging your EV every time you're up here because yep. if you're trying to drive one mile, it's equivalent of like three miles sometimes on the charge station. So it's like 100 miles gets you up here in Wisconsin when you are driving 180 miles on average a week. It's like it gets you freaking yeah. nowhere, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just, like I said. It, it's it's not there yet. I think there's some crazy advancements in yep. the last five years, absolutely, and I think some of those cars are insane. But the practicality of it, I yeah. don't think, is like Dakota said, we're we're just not ready for it. And then I love companies like Mercedes and Porsche that are like, you you people in L.A. want SUVs? Here's a twin turbo, six hundred and forty <laughs> yeah. horsepower Cayenne Macan Turbo GT with carbon ceramic brakes for your wife. It's like two hundred grand. <laughs> Why did you make that? They're like, oh, oh. you gonna buy it? It's kind of cool though. <laughs> it's pink. It's pink. Yeah. So it's anyway, got a nice dashboard. We're gonna take a small break, but not before thanking our sponsor for the Martini Works podcast, which you guys know and love. It is Continental Tire. Oh, yeah. Continental's been a, a sponsor for us for Martini Works for a good long while now. Um, we're finally getting over from our Viking Contact Sevens, getting mm -hmm. our ECSO twos and our DWSO sixes. Yes. onto our cars. We're doing a lot of fun stuff with them. We're taking them out to Road America, taking them to U.S. Air. They're a fantastic tire. And if you guys are wondering what's a great tire that can kind of do it all, that has a really long mileage, really great warranty behind the scenes as well, which we need to talk more about, Continental Tire is an absolutely great option. Mm -hmm. Tons of selection and sizes, whether you have a car, SUV, or a truck, whether it's for a performance car or maybe it's just for your daily driver. Continental has an absolute onslaught of different variety and options for you. So if you're looking for it, you can pick up your Continental tires over at martiniworks.com. So word on the street is, is you guys and gals want us to talk about brands that may or may not be correlated. They want us to spill the tea. Spill it. There's a lot of <laughs> companies that rebrand and make sub companies of certain products yeah. and um, a lot too that like they're all made in the same exact factory for certain things and stuff like that. A lot is like more interchangeable than what you think. So it's so funny because on the internet, you always see people talking shit mm -hmm. and it's like, you, you guys just literally have no fucking idea yeah. what you're saying. You're just spewing information that is not correct mm -hmm. in the slightest. It's like basically every cereal is exactly yeah. the same, you know? It's like, like when like, you see how the sausage is made, they're all owned by the same fucking company. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, you know, and the, the 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 curtain is pulled, and you know, and you're aware, and you're like, yeah, you sons of guns. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I know where that's made. One time I saw this was an awesome series. This guy did it. I don't know where he's at now. It was on TikTok, but he would go to the local supermarkets and he would mm -hmm. take a picture of the sections of different types of food, like sure. cereal, chips, this that, mm -hmm. 
and he would color cord it in the video and show oh, you like who, owned who it. owns yep. what, yep, and yep, then yep. different brands that are owned by the same company. And when you look at something like an Herbs and Spice or even mm. like the Kellogg stuff, it's like 95% of is what you're brand. eating is just branded from Kellogg or Cisco or mm -hmm. something like that. So in the automotive scene, it's actually a lot of the same thing. Surprise, I, surprise. I, I will say that there are some, I'm gonna try and name out a couple of you guys, please step in. But on the wheel side of things, We'll talk about factories that we know are independently operated, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. the people that own the factory also happen to own the wheel brand. Yep. Uh, wheel Pros is actually one of the newest ones here in America yeah. where they are manufacturing their own wheels. Do you know what brands are in, in Wheel Pros you want to share with the class? Like what brands Call aren't in Wheel Pros? <laughs> yeah, it might be easier. Fucking no. everyone. So Rotiform, Motegi. Uh, just to name a couple, I know there's a bunch of other, a bunch of like truck brands. American like Force. Fuel, Moto Metal, mm -hmm. all those. Yeah, so for in, something that's really funny, if you're a truck guy out there, is I think it's like, I think it's, oh God, what is it? One of every eight like aftermarket wheel truck sales is a fuel assault. Mm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, that, that would, so fuel yeah. assaults are, are huge. But yeah, so Wheel Pros actually, I think they invested in two factories here mm -hmm. in the States. I think one is shut down, but I think they have one operational um, that's over in, in the southeast side of the country. But, yeah, they make their own wheels here in the mm -hmm. United States. Uh, a lot of American Force stuff comes out of there. It was yep. a huge initiative by them. It's actually very costly to get mm -hmm. stuff made in America. And just because it says it's made in America does not mean the quality is better. Let's get the myth out of the way, okay? Sure. Quality is super subjective. Yeah, I would say even when things are made in China, it doesn't mean that they're bad. It doesn't mean that they're great. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that they're bad either. A lot of times it's tough to get stuff made in America because the cost of labor yeah. is so high right. over here. And so when that cost, that entry-level cost is already so high, automatically you're going to be looking at ways to cut those costs. And mm -hmm. where does that unfortunately come with? Yeah. Sometimes quality. Yeah, actually. In Japan, though, Volk. Obviously. Volk yeah. owns their own forging process. They own their own mm -hmm. factory manufacturing stuff. Uh, work. Work's huge. Work has their own. They do share some stuff. A lot of these companies share technologies. Mm -hmm. Um, but they usually have a, like a proprietary thing. Volk's whole thing since the dawn of time was their 10,000 pound, 10,000 ton press. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was their thing for the longest mm -hmm. time. Um, and I think they just started to open up some private label production mm -hmm. for some companies. I know Work does it too. Mm -hmm. Work will will um, offer their barrels and stuff private label. Yep. Who else? Enki. Enki. Enki, yeah. BBS. Yep. BBS has their own stuff mm -hmm. in Germany. Yep. And Japan. Yeah, BBS and, Japan. and K and KW. I know KW is like suspension, yeah. but now they are like together, one, yep. together one brand, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yep. KW and ST. Yep. ST's yep. in there. Yeah, so I think that's a little more common. Yeah, I think, I think if you have ever looked into it, you can you can pick that one out pretty easy that, yeah, ST is um, a KW brand. It's like yep. sub -brand. KW's like entry level yeah. almost yep. is like the ST, which mm -hmm. is kind of like, like Rohana and F1R. Yeah. Yeah, so F1R and Rohana are... Mm -hmm owned by the same company, which used to also have uh, Regan 5. Oh, Regen yeah, yeah. 5. I forgot about that. I forgot about those, too. Did they that essentially become F1R? Or is I that think so. They used to have it where it was like Regan 5, F1, no, F1R, F1R Regan, Regan 5, 5 and Rohana. then Rohana. Yeah. And then I think those two got mixed together. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so factories outside of that. So Koenig is a big one as mm -hmm. well because Koenig is owned by a company not owned, I don't know how you'd want a terminology <laughs> yeah, correctly, yeah. but they're through a company called YHI International. Mm -hmm. And they're one of like the six big dogs mm -hmm. in the, the manufacturing world of, of aluminum and metal and things yep. like that. Because most of these companies, honestly, they're foundries, they make factories, and then they say, what can we make with this metal? Mm -hmm. And then that's how they get into all of this stuff. So they say, oh, look, there's a market for wheels, yeah. or there's a market for tires, or there's a market for this. And then they're like, okay, well, let's make stuff for this and that mm -hmm. and this and that. Um, and so YHI is huge. Yeah. Uh, they also make stuff for Enki, um, and then they happen to have Koenig. So Koenig's like proprietary wheels and, and their lightweightness mm -hmm is a lot of that came from shared technology from Enki mm -hmm. and also just the access to some really awesome yeah. um, technology through YHI. Wasn't there, isn't there something wild with like TSW too? Don't they, aren't they responsible for a lot of stuff? Tiger Sport Tiger Wheels. Sport wheels. <laughs> yeah. That was like the biggest thing we learned when we started talking about <laughs> yeah. TSW. You mean to like tell it me it stands for what? <laughs> <laughs> Tiger Sport Wheels, they're the first ones to uh, trademark Rotary 
forging. Rotary forged, yeah. which is why everyone else uses a different yeah. term. Yeah, God, that is a nightmare to dance around. Holy it really shit. is. Every it's like, company has their like, own way of saying it. It's like, yeah, because it's the actual process of like the technical term, rotary forging, and they somehow managed to fucking trademark it. Don't know how. Threw a wrench into everyone's <laughs> fucking marketing and like, you know, all that kind of stuff because. <laughs> How the hell do you say what it is? It's like, oh, well, I got to come up with a new name for it. Cold so that's forge. why you see cold forge, flow formed, flow rotary forge, uh, barrel forge, barrel forge, fucking it, it, all those weird terms that you'll see with a bunch of brands. It's all the same fucking process. They just can't say it because it's trademarked by TSW. That's some good info, I think. Not it's so knew. weird. Yeah. We even dealt with it, obviously, when we were doing our own wheels. We're like, yeah. how the hell? Because we, we use tell the same people process. what yeah. process it is because everyone <laughs> calls it something. Yeah, then TSW got bought by Wheel Pros. So TSW got bought by mm -hmm. Wheel Pros. A lot of the reason that TSW got bought by Wheel Pros was for their logistical structure, yeah. actually, not their wheels. So TSW used to have a ton of warehouses all across the United States. And they make great wheels. Obviously, they're a little bit more of like an old school wheel nowadays, I would say, because they have like Bjorn and all these other brands yeah, underneath yeah. the TSW kind of umbrella. Um, but they had warehouses everywhere. So then Wheel Pros acquired it, and then they used those warehouses to get fulfillment out to mm -hmm. dealers like us in like less than two days, yeah. which means you can order a wheel and it's at people's door in like four if you were to order it from yeah. us. When you get into the – another one, too, that always kind of blew my mind, especially when we started kind of venturing in that field, was all, like, the newer multi-piece wheel stuff. Obviously, that stuff needs to be sourced from mm -hmm. somewhere. Most of the time, like, when you see all these, like, crazy, bespoke, like, wild multi-piece wheel stuff coming in, uh, you see them, they're throwing them on, like, you know, Lamborghinis and, like, crazy wide-body stuff or, like, luxury cars, Lexuses, things like that, your 20, 21-inch multi-piece wheels. You know the wheels I'm, I'm talking about. Like, those discs, the forged discs, have to be made by someone. Mm -hmm. Odds are they, that company themselves is not making those forged Correct. discs. They are buying those blanks from a factory, whether that's in China, whether if it's in fucking Taiwan, mm -hmm. whether it's you know somewhere over there that's making those. And the same goes with your hoops, your lips, your barrels. Yep. They're being sourced from somewhere. And a lot of times they're sharing the same exact materials. Yeah. It all comes down to how they're cutting it, how they're finishing it, how they're assembling it that like truly makes the difference of those. So it's like <laughs> you know you go to compare like some of these like crazy multi-piece wheel brands and it's like it's essentially the same shit. Yeah, you, one of the things that might help you if you're if you're looking at this conversation and saying, "Wow, so you're telling me a $4,000 set is no different than a $10,000 set." I would say yes, could be true, but one thing to remember too and and thing that I really value is the customer service and support and not yeah. all brands do that equally. Mm -hmm. There right. are companies that will go to wit's end, mm -hmm. right? That maybe offer a little bit of a more affordable product than a company that will charge you $10,000 for those wheels. Mm -hmm. And then you reach out to them with an issue and they say, you're kind of shit out of luck. It's a one by one set. We're not helping you at all. And so one of the biggest uh, supporters of that honestly has been number one, stage wheels is always huge. Billy is always behind mm -hmm. yep. trying yep. to figure stuff out for their wheels. And number two, I would say Enki does a good job. Kona though does a fantastic great. fantastic job I've, I've seen that company go through such lengths to help their drivers to help their racers mm -hmm. if there is an issue with their wheels even though a lot of times there really isn't <laughs> even, though, even though it's not really their fault um, so there is a cost to the service I was gonna say that's why I think there's been so much controversy around GMR and yeah, that, yeah. that three-piece wheel company that's kind of come into the fray because people yeah. are like, how are they selling these wheels so cheap? And it's like, well, I'll tell you guys, they're taking the cost of the material and they're adding on 20%. That's what they're doing. Yeah. So whatever the cost that they're getting for their barrels, they're getting it machined by a Haas machine. Mm -hmm. They're probably getting it assembled overseas as well because a lot of Chinese factories are just jumping into three-piece wheel yeah. manufacturing yeah. for you. The MOQs are super low. Um, and they're saying, yeah, so a set of, I mean, we even know, I mean, a set of three-piece 18s from China could cost you, like, 1800 bucks. Yeah. And then you get it over here, right? So after it, it arrives, you're at, like, 2200 Yeah, then it just comes down to how much do you want to make on this set of wheels? They want to make 100 bucks? Yeah. Perfect. They want to we'll make 20%. Yep. So they get a wheel in, $2,200, 20% on top mm -hmm. of that. They sell it for $26. Yeah. That's how you're, that's why you're seeing all of them in, like, the same colorway, too. They're all brushed, <laughs> chrome lip, red red center cap, because that's what the factory mm -hmm. says you can have an MOQ of. Yep. 
Yeah, it, it's pretty wild. The wheel, dude, like the in depths of the wheel industry is just fucking insane. And it it's is. like knowing that and kind of putting the pieces together. And I know, um, and just and just knowing like the processes and stuff too. I remember, uh, where were we? We were at FD Seattle. Um, and 326 Power had a booth there, which I thought was awesome. I love the 326 Power stuff. Obviously, mm-hmm. huge following behind that. But I remember I picked up one of the, I think it was a 20 inch wheel that they had. It was like the big, like blocky spoke. Dude, I almost broke my back. That wheel was so fucking heavy. <laughs> and it, and they're like, oh well, yeah, it's a it's a cast face, <laughs> full cast. It's a it's like. You know, the it was multi piece, but the fucking face of the wheel was actually cast. It wasn't a forged disc, so it's like this huge blocky design. I was like, Alex, you gotta pick up that fucking I wheel. Barely pick it up. It's like ninety <laughs> pounds, dude. It's a fucking truck wheel. That's when I when I saw. I think it was like Dead on Alex did a, a new like tri spoke mm-hmm. for his for his uh, Lexus, which looks fucking insane. It looks insane, by the way. but I want to know. I want to know how much that thing weighs. I want to know oh, how yeah. much that three spoke weighs. <laughs> that thing cannot be light, considering that it's that's a, a cast face with a forged barrel. I think it's a twenty-one inch wheel. Yeah, and that's it's a huge wild. spoke. Yeah, it's a huge spoke. I think the only other thing I would say, if you guys are wondering, like, pro tips for the multi-piece wheel thing. Number one, mm-hmm. anybody can make a three-piece wheel. Yes. Not everybody can make a three-piece wheel that is actually certified and impact tested. So if you're wondering how the difference in price can sometimes mm-hmm. play along, look to see if those wheels are actually certified. Like, <laughs> certified. FEA, even like an FEA analysis, mm-hmm. some of these companies aren't doing. An FEA analysis essentially just says, hey. That's like the, your like entry level, like, hey, we know that they can at least hold this amount of weight or this amount of impact and like that's just like a si- that essentially a simulation yeah and that it, is run through a cad software mm-hmm. um that'll show you like hey when you have this much load at this angle at this whatever here is what that impact what's gonna break like. first yeah essentially is what it does yeah, but it's a good certifi- way to- the certifications are just the the actual like hey taking that analysis putting it to a process and saying mm-hmm. is this good enough yeah and, and a- and a lot of times those three piece wheels, that's where some of them that's where you see like a BBS multi piece mm-hmm. wheel be more expensive. Because yeah. even their multi piece stuff is tested and analyzed and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. If you get a new brand on the block, and not saying there's anything wrong with it, but they do a crazy design on it. They got some wild stuff. Mm-hmm. You may never know how that wheel's actually going to handle if it were to have an impact right. on it. And that's where you get those photos, you get those those videos on TikTok or on Facebook that are like, my insert kind of trendy brand here <laughs> three piece wheel it broke exploded. and it explodes well yeah it's going to explode it has absolutely no tensile strength on those spokes there's nothing well, there not on the like the floating spokes you know like tensile, the you wouldn't do tensile strength. what would you do the i don't know but it's not tensile tensile's like pulling i guess what i'm saying <laughs> is, is the the point of where when you have something that's floating and something touches it at a perpendicular angle and there's no strength to handle that oh, bend and it just okay. shatters yeah, yeah. right a lot of times floating spokes that's what happens with them Dakota, anything like that yeah it's not just wheels it's tires everything. it's suspension it's everything that you're gonna see this like pieces are mm-hmm. shared between or even like we were talking about two companies have like a parent brand and then a sister brand it's all over and it's not necessarily a bad thing it's no. just like be careful when you're talking shit about a brand because it's probably like your favorite brand's little <laughs> sister company or some yeah. shit like that. It's yeah. really and funny. essentially it can be a good thing too. Yeah, like, it can you know, be a hundred percent. Like the KW thing, for instance, like no, they choose to or they chose to take just a few features out of it. Maybe went with a little bit of a cheaper material, but it's still manufactured and engineered by the same team of KW. But it's a cheaper coilover option for you, and it's made by a brand that you know and trust. Yeah. Like that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I no. commend companies for doing that. Like, why not give a more entry level budget option? Like yep. that's fucking awesome. And it's still back. One by that the same I people. seen that was interesting that's close to home for us is I seen Fortunato made an announcement that I, I didn't even know this. They were supplying shocks for Broadway suspension. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um they're no longer doing that. Apparently that's over, mm-hmm. but it just goes to show like if you're getting Broadways essentially you're getting some. So I remember a lot of people were too. talking those coilovers up like yeah. crazy. Yep. So that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like it's so interconnected yeah. between all of it. What are some tips for people listening in your guys' opinion across the industry where you want to know like how can you uh, maybe take what we just said and turn yeah. it into something valuable. So I'll give I'll give my my first tip first. Yeah. If you guys are looking for wheels 
and you're trying to understand where the value of the wheel is coming from in terms of cost, and you're, you're looking at that $1,300 range and you're really trying to figure it out. Number one, service, customer service matters a ton with wheels because you're going to have issues, you're going to have problems. Every once in a while, it's just how it goes. You want to find a company that supports their audience as much as they can, not just pre-purchase, but afterwards. So go read those reviews and look for the ones where it's like, hey, I had an issue and they fixed it. Those are the kind of companies that you want to buy from. That's where it's really going to matter. And the second thing that I'll say is a lot of times those certifications, they do matter. The biggest difference between wheels at that $1,300 price range is whether they're made in China or whether they're made in Taiwan. And we've seen more consistency in finish and weight when the factories are in Taiwan. The things in China are not bad by any instance, but a lot of times, a lot of those companies are usually fending off of marketing push mm -hmm. and marketing sauce and design rather than the actual integrity of the wheel. Yeah, so that would be my absolutely. tip. I'd say mine is don't get so blinded by, you know, the brands in a sense like you may hear a new name come up before you just go bashing it because it's a new name look into it because there's more than likely going to be signs that point to hey this is related to this brand or it's the same thing or you know it it's its own thing but the quality is actually there like you know it, there's so many times that we've seen people just bash a brand for the sake of bashing a brand because it's not bbs because it's not work because it's not made in japan and it's like Okay, if that's what you want, that's totally fine. If that's what you like, cool. But like, it doesn't mean that it's, like you said, necessarily bad. There's a lot of other things that go into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say just everything you take from this, um, none of it is necessarily a bad thing. No. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if brands share a similar thing or have a sister company mm -hmm. or anything like that, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing at all. Um, but I, I think it's worth doing your research. Brands are color, images, and voice, you know? <laughs> yep. Look into what you need and see if that brand has what you need, you know? Don't just follow, you know, the and flashy it, images or what your favorite influencer yeah. is running. And, Make sure you get what you need. And that's and, and it is kind of a weird plug, but that's why we do Martini Works, right? Yep. Is like our goal here is to give you an honest, supportive, mm -hmm. safe place to like ask questions and understand really what are you buying because we don't want to just push what's cheapest and what's going to get the most margin. Trust me, we know what can get us the most money back. We've mm -hmm. been asked a million times to put those products on our website and we've chosen not to. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we do that is because we want you to feel like when you are out there, when you are getting help by Carissa or Gels or Dakota, you feel like you're actually getting help for you to build the best car that's within your budget and what you actually, actually want versus just saying, What's the flashiest, brightest, right. but cheapest and shittiest, yeah. you know? So. Yeah, I'd say I remember the whole point that we did this was so that we could talk about the brands we actually mm -hmm. enjoy, stuff we actually believe in. So when we're plugging stuff and talking about it, that's mm -hmm. stuff we get behind. That shit we're going to put on our own cars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and that's the difference. So you, with that being said, we do have a, a sponsor for part two. Oh, Jels, did you have something to say? I'm sorry. It's not really going to fit anymore. It was going to be a nice little cap on that, but. Go ahead. You can do better than Avid One. <laughs> Damn, just fucking throws at everyone. What are they going to do? They're nothing. <laughs> what are they going to do? They know. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked to them. They know. They're, they're proud about being a rep company. Yeah. When, like, you're making, oh, yeah. when you're making as much money as they are, I don't yeah. think they care. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, we do have another sponsor that we would like to thank, but I'm going to pass it off to somebody else because I don't want to give both, both plugs. Dakota, you want to give us a Fortunato! Again, one of those companies can't say enough about, and I'm actually going to put on my car. Guess what I just did? What'd what? you do? Fortunato's are on the Super still. Because I love them, <laughs> and I haven't had to change them out. I haven't needed to upgrade. My 500s are going strong. We got to go down there. We got to see the inner workings of Fortunato, which was awesome, and they are a sponsor for the Martini Works podcast. The difference between Fortunato and the rest is the quality and time that they put into each one of their coilovers. It literally blew my mind. I'm still trying to make sense of it. They have a small team that's all working and hand assembling every coilover and making sure it meets a specific requirement. And if it doesn't make it, they're tearing that shit all down. They're going back at it until it's perfect, and then they're going to send it to you. And that's why I think every time I've had a set of Fortunatos, I have had no complaints. They ride better than any other coilovers that I've rode on, and that's why I continue to get them. So if you want to send Let's jump right into it, ladies and gentlemen. There's a whole lot going on in the world. First things oh, first. Yeah. I got something to ask you guys. Okay. okay. Something I've been thinking about. Okay. 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Jr.'s podcast about cheating and skirting the rules is a great listen, even if you don't like NASCAR. I've seen this a lot. Yeah. When we talk about racing, okay. people constantly talk about skirting the rules, mm -hmm. trying to find gray areas, things like that, things like that. Now, I haven't actually been in that scene, so I don't know if it's as active as I think. But for some reason or another, I just feel like if you were a newbie and you were going into the racing scene and you tried to find ways to cheat, you'd immediately be frowned upon. Right. For cheating. Right. Yep. But everybody that's successful in racing Has says that you that. need to cheat and that they have cheated. So do you cheat? Do you try to skirt? What's Dude, what are your, what are, what are your ethical opinions on? I don't know. Like, it, yeah. I'm honestly the type of person like if I'm playing Monopoly with a group of people and there's somebody that's like grabbing three hundred as they pass go instead of two hundred <laughs> or mm -hmm. you know, grabbing yeah. extra cash or not paying them like that irks me. Like Dude, right. play the fucking well, game. Follow the rules. Yeah, like, but that's the type of person. Right, but it's like at the same time, it's like they are following the rules, but they're they're not following the unwritten rules. Yeah, the, yeah I don't the like exploitation. That. Yeah. That's the exploitation. Just being stupid, <laughs> or like, is it me. being smart? But I get it because if you're racing fair and literally, let's say eighty percent of everyone else is doing mm -hmm. something to get by, you know. Yeah. It's an unfair advantage, so yeah. I don't know what you do at that point. I don't know what those are. I'd have to know what it is. Is it like, well, like I seen some crazy thing where a guy got banned because his had yeah. webbed gloves. I don't yeah. even understand how that. So there's a there's some fun there's some fun ones out there. Like there's one where, um, way back in '67, I think it was, it was like a Penske car mm -hmm. where they took the shell of this Camaro and they like they acid bathed it. They yep. dunked it. And, and they got the metal thin. as thin as humanly possible mm -hmm. and then put it back on the car. And they made a joke that there were some points where you could almost see through the metal. It was so <laughs> thin. But technically, it was metal. you could still do it because it was still a 67 Camaro. So the, when, the, when they absolutely obliterated the competition, <laughs> the stewards were like, you can't do that. You can't acid bath your car for the race day. Okay, so get yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So then they came back mm -hmm. with a clone of the same exact car. And what they did is they would switch out the cars in the garage. And so the stewards never knew. Yeah, see, that's a little that's cheating. That's cheating. See? The <laughs> first one I was going to yeah. give, our, all right, they just yeah. figured out and they were too yeah. smart. Like, like, that was going to thin this smart. bitch out. That yeah. rule wasn't made, yeah. and it seemed legit. But then they made the rule. Next part's like, cheating. Yeah. Next part's <laughs> cheating. And I don't like that. I don't yeah. support that. I feel like skirting the rules, I feel is I feel like is a normal part of it. But I think where I where I would feel so weird, right, is like I, I put myself in those shoes where mm -hmm. go to grid life, run my first event, really give the rule book a, a read through, and yeah. I'm like, Well, I could do this. <laughs> I could technically do this. And then I go to the second one, right? Yeah. And let's say I don't do good, but I mm -hmm. still do better. And somebody looks at my car and is like, you can't do that. And they start getting confrontational with mm. me. I feel like I would just buckle. Mm. I'd be like, oh, I'm so Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're I'm right. sorry. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but the, if the rules don't say yeah. I can't, then I can. Cheating so, is for people that can't win normally. Yeah, that's where it's like, it, it's so weird because I think it's so dependent on like the situation too, where it's like, talked about like the metal. Yeah, like there was no, nothing that said you couldn't, but they did it. But then they got around it because then, you know, they were after yeah. him. I, I, I keep coming back to like, when we're, we're looking at like the loopholes of the rule book, I just the scene that keeps playing over my mind is the Chelsea Denofa Dan Stuckey incident from Formula Driven. Yeah, that was a weird one. Where you know they he wanted to challenge that uh, run because of the whole like lead chase um, mm -hmm. because of the hood situate the hood pin. So uh, for those that don't know, yeah. there was a huge Formula Drift controversy last year. You where probably Dan, saw the video <laughs> where Dan Stuckey and Chelsea Denofa got into it at English Town yep, yep. because Dan Stuckey challenged him losing to Chelsea Denofa because Chelsea's hood was wobbling. Yep. They said and it was a distraction. Because it was a distraction, that caused the the issue with the run. So mm -hmm. they had to rerun it. In the top 16. In the top 16. To figure out who was actually in the top 16. Only to find out that Chelsea absolutely stomped him <laughs> again. Yeah. And then Chelsea, obviously there was a huge amount of controversy behind it, but at the end of the day, I think Formula they Drift followed the rule book. They followed the rule book. And they they did were allowed to do that. And they can do that. Now, that doesn't make it any less of kind of a right. weenie call. But, yeah. you know, if you have your entire life on the line, you have all of your money on the, life, on the line, your passion's on the mm -hmm. line, if you have the opportunity to run again, would you'd you? do it, right? I feel like mostly anybody would do that. Anybody would try to make that call to keep going. Yeah. But... It that it, it comes down to <laughs> it yeah. just it's just are you gonna be a good person about it or not and and I in my opinion that call was like dude 
the run really wasn't that clean. Sure, the opportunity was there to do it again, uh, but then he just got absolutely stomped on again by Chelsea. And that was I would have loved to see Formula Drift maybe get a little bit more objective or share more with the audience mm-hmm. about those challenges because mm-hmm. I hear that those challenges actually happen a lot more than what they yeah. they share yeah. on the live stream. And you have to pay for them, I believe, right? Yeah, that's a cost. And on top of that, like I remember one time I was we were near the Forsberg mm-hmm. tent over in, in St. Louis, and oh, I yeah. heard that they – they challenged something, but that never was like a public thing that they mm-hmm. challenged. And so they did. Audience never heard it. I heard it. And that's I was like, weird. Yeah. Why wouldn't they there share was another. There, I can't remember if that's fact, by the way. I'm just there saying. was another one, too, that I remember at St. Louis with yep. um, Odie. Was it Odie? It may have been. I believe I where it was like it was like we were in like the final like two or three, but they were like, oh, yeah, no, this challenge came in at the beginning of the top 16, and they were still trying to figure it out, and it was, like, in the, like the final battle, and they are like, what? <laughs> Hold up, because this could change who's in the final battle. Yeah. It was really weird. It was something like that, but, yeah. No, it, it it's situation-based. I think, you know, it comes down to a game of ethics at some point um, because, no, I agree. There are some where it's, like, you kind of look at it and like, damn, they were smart. They played by the rule book. They found out what wasn't in there, and they were able to make it work in their advantage. But then there's some other places where it's like, you got to take the ethics into consideration there. It's like, are you just being a shitty person at that point? I think there's a lot of PR in the world of motorsport for this sort of stuff because people skirt rules all the time, and I think it's so easy if they don't have a good PR team for somebody to come along and be like, they're just a shit person because they keep breaking the rules mm-hmm. and they're known for it. Like even in NASCAR, that's huge. Yeah, like there are yeah, people yeah. that are known for doing that. Right. And if they don't have a good PR team to like support them and do like mm-hmm. fun stuff and like funny thing, they're just a shit person. Yeah, you just get known there's, for... <laughs> there's no marketing or media for them being a good person. Yeah. All right, I got another one. Yeah, yeah. What that's do you a guys, good one though. That's a- what do you guys think is the best factory OEM option in cars? Factory OEM option? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you mean like that you can... Air like- conditioned seats. Ooh, those are nice. This I've never had it. Chain game changer completely. You'll never go back. My God, I get disappointed <laughs> every time I get in a new car and it doesn't have air conditioned seats. They are nice. Okay, what do you got? Oh man, um, honestly, it's <sighs> just like a nice interface system. Whether that's like Apple CarPlay, whether it's mm. like just any sort of nice Bluetooth, anything like Apple that. Apple CarPlay is nice. That is nice. Okay. I I came around to it. I get it. Okay. Well, you Alex. So, uh, oh, my favorite factory option. That's a good question. Other, otherwise, some like TRD. I offer, got it. Like lowering springs, which is also dope. This doesn't sound so basic. Yeah, it's okay. Apple CarPlay. That's what we just, what said. I just said. Oh well, I didn't hear it because I was thinking about <laughs> mine. <laughs> oh man, I got a crazy one. Yeah, we're never so, gonna hear. Joe's was like Apple CarPlay. Actually, <laughs> Apple CarPlay, I think, is mine. Alex, what's yours? I got it. <laughs> Apple CarPlay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll switch mine. I'll switch mine okay, to okay. the lowering springs because, like, uh, with the GR eighty sixes and stuff <laughs> okay. like that, um, I, like TRD offers you can get like lowering springs with your cars right out of the factory, which is it pretty was. Neat. It was just like I was thinking. I don't. I've never had anything new except the Z, <laughs> and I was thinking about like what the craziest yeah, what, thing. About what did it. I like about it? It was like Apple CarPlay. It was so convenient. Um, <laughs> We're basic. To, okay, so I'll, I'll read off some. Yeah. Uh, on a new and fairly affordable car, the STI dry carbon rear spoiler is somebody's favorite thing. It's a six thousand dollar add on. That's, That's not ridiculous. Worth it. Um, That's here's not here's worth here's, it. here's a fun one that I like. Why would that be your favorite? Uh, the Honda. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Honda. Hold on, hold on. It was Honda's dog friendly element package was a pretty cool option in the Honda Element. It came with. Dog friendly emblems, a rear car kennel, a kennel organizer, a pet bed, a stowable ramp, dog pattern seat covers, all season dog bone floor mats, a spill resistant water Jesus. bowl, and an electric fan in the back. That's pretty For dope. Five grand. What the hell That's is a sick. dog friendly emblem? Yeah, I do want to. I don't know. <laughs> or badging was, or whatever. I was, just, I was just reading the ad, I don't baby. Know what that like, means. But yeah, that's cool. That's there, was a, there was a supercharger. OEM option for the Honda CRZ. I actually remember that. Oh yeah, that was I don't cool. remember that. The, apparently, the TC had a supercharger option too. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Our buddy blew it up, <laughs> threw it away. Um, let's see. You can get an entire matching 911 turbo while you wait for your Porsche 918 to be built. I didn't know that. That seems weird. I don't know if I believe that. Let's see. <laughs> VW <laughs> Audi wing and back seats. The what? We never got them stateside, but they're basically Recaro Sportster CS seats with more cushion and OEM mm. trim on the rails. Sounds cool. There are some really cool OEM seats out there. Yeah, Honda, especially uh, in the Euro stuff. Honda had a Honda Vac, 
a vacuum built into their <laughs> oh, Honda Odyssey. We got to talk about the Moto Compacto. <laughs> what is that? The little briefcase scooter. Oh, what does that come in? That was, it was for the Honda City, wasn't it? You could get it as like an add-on for the Honda oh, City, I didn't know and it, it was would stow away in the back. I didn't know it was an option for a car. I believe it. Well, I could be wrong on that. God, it I'm, was at least like tied to one of their older cars. Wish, oh, thinking of Sean Berger made me think of one. There was like a <laughs> Hi, night Sean. vision available oh, in one yeah. of the Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. So that way, like your camera could see yeah. people walking well, by or animals go by. He also had that Mercedes flip phone that came with his <laughs> yeah. E55 AMG. That's just dope. I pay. Really I pay. Good. He kept that his desk. Was just <laughs> I remember I paid extra for my for my original Mercedes to come with. I had an '89 Mercedes that came with a Mercedes phone in the. Oh middle. hell yeah! Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Cool. What is the worst facelift since Ooh. 2000? Since 2000? Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Lexus and BMW Super. are competing for the stupidest, most over the top front end ever. <laughs> That's what the top comment is. I don't like the new Subaru WRX. I think aesthetically it's not good. Yeah. I think um, there was, I remember the Camaros got a little weird too. I was going to say the Camaros yeah. got really ugly. The the front end on the Camaro got weird. Especially the recent one. It kind of yeah. like, it, it has this weird angle to it. Yeah, the I, headlights are getting weird. The whole thing's getting kind of weird. I remember when the first Transformers came out and I saw that Camaro, I was like, that is cool i was yeah, like that is know. that is sick and i remember even as the car got a couple of generations and i'm like it's, like, okay, it's looking it still better holds up, still it's holds still, up and then they got rid of the circle headlights and i'm like i'm done i don't like it and then it got worse <laughs> the zl1 that nate nathan had mm -hmm. that one was my favorite mm -hmm. and then whatever they did after that got yeah up. like the, the headlights got like more slim they did, yeah. the, they did the jeep cherokee effect i don't know how <laughs> i would i would love to do a video and maybe i will why are cars purposely getting uglier like what happened <laughs> who there's one designer out there that made the jeep cherokee headlights and for some reason Everyone's or another like, that's it everybody <laughs> drank that kool-aid and they all did it and it's like how or why what, uh, was jeep following someone else well, that's what know. i'm trying to figure out yeah. i cannot remember a i just always start. i just always remember jeep being the one that everyone's like those That's are the ugly. wackest yeah. headlights I've ever fucking seen. And it's like, they even were like, yeah, we're going to go back on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they did. Somebody said the 1999 facelifted Hyundai Tiburon. God kill it. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember what this looks like. I'm typing it. I don't now. either. Did you say after 2000? Tiburon. It yeah. Well, I guess the facelift would have been. Oh, yeah. That's ugly. Well, wait, that, so it was like the pre-facelift yeah, or the that post one. Oh! Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's ugly That was car. the pre-facelift? Yeah. That well, then the, the post-facelift got better. Yeah. Okay, well, that's kind of opposite of what they're saying. I yeah. Listen, man, I'm just... Because there was a lot that I would say did get better. Yeah. Yeah. The talent. The GR86 is one of them, I think. Oh, my God, I love the look of that car. Yeah. I'd say I, that, but I, I think the, the earlier model looks good, still look good, too, but, but I like that better. That does yeah. look good. Yeah. Okay. We got another oh, one. I, I, one from the 90s. Yeah, the Talon. Like going from the 2GA to the 2GB from like the 95, 96 to the 97 onward. So much better. I will say this too. I do think the Z looks better than the 370Z. Maybe a hot take. Just my opinion. I don't know where I'm at with that. It's a, I have to think about it. It's a it. lukewarm take. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like hmm, P that's, warm. That's, I can put warm. my feet in there. Um, Body temperature, warm tea. What what trends do you think? <laughs> will, what trends do you think will become extremely popular in the future? Top comment: Mini trucks are coming back. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah. That's another scene that like get so much work invested in it. And Dude, those people insane. that are in it are so insanely so passionate. Much fabrication and it's kind of slept on. So I could see it yeah. getting more. So popular. lower a truck is wild. A lot of work. There's it's lot so much work. Of shit that goes into it's that. It's so much freaking work. When Anthony did that video of the Florida truck meet Dude, or whatever it was, was and the scene sh starts yeah. out with the three duallys <laughs> dumped, I was like, <laughs> I sent it to Dustin yeah. first. I was like, I want that, and he's like, that thing can't tell anything. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> he's like, care. it's also like five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> it's you're watching a five bedroom, four bath <laughs> to drive down the road. Yeah. I rode my buddy's uh, this weekend. Mm. He has a lowered uh, GMC, okay. uh, single cab. Pro charged, yeah. big old pro charger. <laughs> that thing fucked. I loved it. It was so good in mm. every way. So yeah, I could see lower trucks definitely. Yeah. Somebody said not to mention K trucks. K trucks. Yeah. K trucks. Uh, buttons will make a comeback. Was one of the oh absolutely, yeah. absolutely good. Not everything needs to be a touch screen, and that's okay. And I, I saw <laughs> oh. one, I saw one other one that I do really agree with, and that was EV conversions of classic cars. That could mm. be cool. 
I saw for some of them. Things. I saw them. I saw some at SEMA. Yeah, right. And I thought it was actually pretty neat. It they're essentially like bringing this car and instead of bringing it up to like 1972 that. and not paying. Let me be clear, because a full resto mod of classic cars mm -hmm. can sometimes be half a million dollars. These guys can go in there for like a hundred or eighty, do a full EV conversion on these cars, new dash, power steering, all of it, and it's still cheaper than a full resto mod. That is going into that kind of business in fucking veteran mode because who's that fucking demographic? <laughs> because ninety five percent of the people who are owning these classic muscle cars don't want do not EV. want to do like they are the last person that you could probably fucking convince to turn it into a fucking Tesla. You're like right. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> who is who, that demographic? Who is that demographic. Because I can't picture who that is. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's, who's doing getting that. the fucking sixties Mustang and throwing an electric motor in it because I don't know anyone. <laughs> you guys will have to let us know in the comments below on what your thoughts are on that. But we want to thank you for jumping into the Martini Works podcast this week. It's been an absolute blast. And if you're looking for car parts, remember modjacartmartiniworks.com. Gels, anything you'd like to add? No, that shit just blows my mind. I forgot about that, but now I remember it and it's when we talk about it at lunch. It's now. bouncing around in my head again. Dakota? I got nothing. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Peace.